Let's get to what Detroit has been waiting for for 32 years. And the thing that made me laugh the most last night, the concept that no one has ever been able to text someone congratulations on winning a Lions playoff game because (laughs) in 1991, there were no text messages. Cell phones were still in their infancy and only like the really rich people had that that. big giant brick phone. It's the first time the text, the SMS had a deal with the Lions. Congratulations. A crush of Lions. I think Tariko mentioned that near the end of the game last night. So – Look, we were talking about this before the show. We had kind of overlooked the Rams all year, yeah. as had many others. Right. This felt like another year to pay the bill from the F them picks mindset to win the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. The idea of them getting to the playoffs this year was unthinkable entering the season. Right. And then they beat the Seahawks to start the season. Well, that's just that's just yeah, it's a that's a blip. That's yeah. a fluke. And then they were they were struggling for a while, but they start to get it going, and they really got something in Puka Nakua, the fifth round rookie from Brigham Young, who could be offensive rookie of the year. Although I think we saw the offensive rookie of the year on Saturday. We'll talk about that game too. Matthew Stafford staying healthy most of the year. Cooper Cup getting healthy. Aaron Donald still with gas in the tank. Some young defensive players after they trade Jalen Ramsey and kind of put Raheem Morris in a position where he's got one hand tied behind his back. The defense came on. Yeah. They were playing better down the stretch than the Lions. And, you know, maybe the Lions were saving a little something for that first home playoff game. And you underestimate the importance of the crowd support. Dan Campbell, the coach of the team, talked about that a lot. But it becomes a magical, special night. And they still only won by one point and could have lost. But that crowd and that vibe and that feeling and that urgency to get a playoff win for the first time in 32 years helped carry the day. And they needed it because without that, they very well might have lost. Again, it was a one-point victory. The Rams covered. You and I both took the Rams, and we were right. The Rams covered. Yeah, well, it was a great game. I think that's where you start, right? You, you kind of It was one of those games where as soon as you turned on the TV, you heard the crowd noise, you went, wow, this sounds even a little more extra juice in the stands and the crowds than even your normal playoff game where we can always kind of feel that buzz. But like yesterday, you were like, whoa. I mean, as soon as we came on air and showed some shots and we heard the crowd noise, you went, whoa, they are amped up and ready to go. I mean, the scene set with Stafford running onto the field, being booed, and they love them really, but they love their Lions a lot more. And then, of course, chanting Jared Goff as he's warming up. I mean, that was really cool. So I'm very happy for the Detroit Lions and their their fans and everything. It's It's been a long time coming. And how can you not say positive things about Dan Campbell and everything he's turned around there, right? But it was an awesome football game. It really was. I mean, it, talk about a tale of two halves. I mean, the first half, it was literally like – I mean, you, you you heard me in the viewing room. I was going, man, the Rams, they got to do something different. I mean, the, the Detroit's just going to move the ball up and down the field on them. They're doing whatever they wanted. Run the ball, pass the ball. It didn't matter. They could do it all, right? And, of course, the Rams weren't far behind that. They were moving the ball as well, but not to the same capacity. Second half starts, we got a totally different football game. And, you know, I really kind of felt like – the Rams outplayed Detroit in the second half, you know, had maybe more control of the football game, certainly controlled the clock. You know, they outgained Detroit by almost 100 yards total. But I think the big thing was, like, we always kind of hit on to a degree of situational football. And the fact that the Lions scored three touchdowns and one field goal, and the you know the the Rams had a set settle for two touchdowns and three field goals, that was the difference in the game. They got deep inside Detroit's red zone, right, three different times, and they said, "Nope, you're not getting the touchdown. We're going to hold you to a field goal." And uh, of course, those were huge moments of the football game that the Rams, you know, lost some opportunities there to control it a little bit. Well, and then having to burn a couple of timeouts yeah, on, offense on offense in right. the second half left the Rams. Kyron Williams getting hurt, yeah, in a hurt. position where they just right. couldn't. They couldn't stop the clock and they couldn't stop the Lions when they needed to to get the ball back and a chance to win the game it was a very close game it was a very exciting game we're going to Detroit this weekend sources close to me tell me it's awesome for the game on Sunday the divisional game coverage begins at 2 p.m eastern that's good it's going to be cold but we will be inside either way but it'll be cold outside it'll be cold getting there but that's fine it's going to be cold where we live anyway we're going to be in the cold anyway but indoors Ford Field I've never been to Ford Field I've been to Detroit just to the airport right I've never actually been to cool Detroit. Stadium. Looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, you'll like it. That scene last night was awesome. Right. Barry Sanders, Calvin Johnson, Eminem, all they these all others. They came out. Yeah, it was great. It was uh, great. And I'm sure they'll be back this week because, look, 
I don't care who they play. It's they're the going to be favored. Show in town, they're right. going to be favored. Definitely. They're, they're sitting pretty right they're now. They're going to be favored by five or six. Right. There's Ryan Day. There's Eminem. I mean, oh, Eminem. Your buddy. He does, he's got that black dye. He's got the he's Ryan Day black out. dye in the beard. Come on, Eminem. Yeah, but you know what? When you're Eminem, you can do bodyguard you can next do, to him, too. That guy. You can do Whoever whatever. You can do whatever. <laughs> You want? I love Eminem. Yeah, I, I I hope we see him. I I you know I probably won't. They probably won't talk to us. He'll know me, but you he won't yeah, know yeah, you. Yeah, he won't know me. <laughs> but He's I know him. Know I've been listening to. He's I might know, know you. Just let that go. He'll call like, you oh, Phil. Yeah, know Maybe he will know yeah, you. I don't like, know. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, Phil. Good to meet you. I'm Chris. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. <laughs> but no, I I mean I I yeah I've got uh, I, I I know lyrics. I. I know some Eminem. Well, yeah. Well, it, it, that he he brought rap to the whole white people crowd. That's so. That's that's how you know. I've got right? the Sugar Hill Gang original. <laughs> okay, vinyl, okay, so come okay. On. OG. I don't okay. know who you think you're dealing you. with here. I don't know. Now that you just you, you made me perk up yeah, a little bit hip, there. Hop to the hippie to the hippie to the hip hip hop. You don't stop rocking to the out. Uh, I forget the rest. All right, but I'd remember it if I had time to think about it. Okay, so. Let's uh, let's hear from Dan Campbell okay. talking about the Jared Goff performance. Twenty two of twenty seven for two seventy seven and a touchdown last night. Here's Campbell. Thought he played uh, top notch football. You know, he, he probably had two errors and everything else was. I thought he was on point. He looked loose. He looked relaxed. I thought he threw the ball with conviction. Uh, was strong in the pocket. Got us in the in the right play. And he felt that way all week. He just was locked in all week, you know, and he's really been that way for six weeks now, like where you really felt like whew, he's uh, he's really honed in here. So just really proud of him, you know, and what he means to us and his play today. And, and I bring it back again. He's one of the reasons that we won this division, and he's another reason why we just won our first playoff game here in 30 years. So um, what a stud. Almost, it was surreal. You know, it was it was something that you kind of imagined for so long. Um, it, from the moment I got here, you imagined getting that playoff win and, and having type of this type of atmosphere in front of our home crowd and um, being able to sit on the ball like that and, and finish it out. And uh, yeah, it kind of all hit me there. And um, to be honest with you, I didn't know it was over once we got the first down and until they sent in the personnel, and it kind of all hit me at once. But um, yeah, kind of had to subdue a lot of emotions this week and um, was able to kind of. Enjoy that moment. There was some stuff that Amon Ross St. Brown said last week that kind of hinted that Goff, Goff was doing his best to to manage to himself. manage it and right. not say the wrong things. Right. But I mean, think about it. At the end of the day, they threw him out, and they had to attach a first-round draft pick to Jared Goff to get the Lions to take him. And, I mean, let's not do too much of a victory out here like they found. Like, they they knew that they were absorbing a contract that was not a great contract. And they made it work. We thought it was going to be two years, and then they'd move on. Well, they're into year three now, and here they are in the playoffs, winning a game on the brink of the NFC Championship. They went there in 1991, lost to Washington. That's the last time both Washington and Detroit have been to the NFC Championship when they played each other in 1991. Wow. And I, I think, you know, we, we talked last week, like if the Eagles know they're going to San Francisco, I'm less inclined to think they're going to win tonight. Right, right. I think there's benefit in the Lions finding out just before the game, hey, we don't have to go back to Dallas. Yeah, we're gonna. They kind of wanted to. Yeah, but you want a home game. Hundred percent. You, that you takes just over. punch a ticket, punch a ticket, and oh, you're in the NFC Championship. That gives you extra juice. Like I guarantee, as they were, you know, getting dressed for that football game, they're hearing the score of the other game, and they're going, "What? Right? You know, you're starting to put your pads on. Hey, I'm gonna go out for the early warm up, maybe with my spandex on and my shorts and all that." Oh man, we what, you kidding me? The Green Bay's up nothing? like this, yeah. right? We got a chance. We win tonight. We're gonna have another game here, right? And and so yeah, that does add some extra juice to their football team. Certainly, I think that gives them a, a little extra incentive. And then hey, back to Jared Goff. I mean, Goff, uh, how could you not be you know admire the guy, be proud of the guy? Yeah, I mean, it, that was a blow. That's a blow to any quarterback, anybody's ego. I don't care who you are. Hey, we did some good things here with the Rams. We went to the Super Bowl. You don't want me anymore? You're just going to trade me out the door just like that? In fact, you're going to give away stuff to trade me? I mean, in NFL world, that's as disrespectful as it gets. 
So that's why, you know, last night in the pregame show, I was like, man, Jared Goff's the one that's going to be – it's just personal to him. This was personal. Matthew Stafford had nothing to be mad about. He he didn't want to be a part of Detroit anymore. And won a, a Super run. Bowl. Right. And won a Super Bowl's right. first year. And he went to L.A. right the first year and was like, hey, I took yeah. that guy's job and made us better. And, hey, so everything's good for him. He's not mad at the Rams or the Lions. Jared Goff's sitting there going, wait, I'm an L.A. kid. I was the number one pick, and that team screwed me over. And then, of course, they won a Super Bowl without me with the guy that's, you know, the old quarterback of this team. So the physical, not only, you know, the physical remake of him and the aggressive throws and some of the things that the reason the Rams got rid of him was because he couldn't make big-time aggressive throws in big moments, a la the Super Bowl wide-open post for touchdowns. Exactly. I mean, that was kind of a microcosm of why they got rid of him there. And Detroit, and this is where, you know, Dan Campbell's attitude and having an ex-quarterback and Mark Brunel work with golf, they, you know, like we talked about, retooled, rewired the robot and got him confidence again and play a game that fits him along with that. And he's, you know, taken advantage of that opportunity and, and made a lot of big throws, especially early in the game. To come out that way and kind of the Rams were wobbly there for a little bit. If it ain't for Matthew Stafford and that offense kind of holding them in there in the first half, you're going, oh, no, they're in deep trouble here, the Rams. Uh, but really, I, I do really feel good for Jared Goff. What a great story. And it goes right along in lines with, with the Lions and everything that they're doing too. Right, but you crank it up a notch this week. Yeah, it's going to be a And they game. should be able to win. They should. I suspect you and I will both be picking them. I have a feeling that when it's time – for all of us to make our picks on Saturday or Sunday, excuse me, it's going to be clean sweep it's, lines. It's hard to pick right now the Bucks or the Eagles over the Detroit Lions. I mean, I, I think I, I don't think I'm crazy to say this. I mean, I certainly felt a lot more comfortable about the Rams being a better quality team right now than the Eagles or the Buccaneers. They might have got they, that might have been out of the two games. Yeah, last night was the toughest matchup, yeah. right? So and tough matchup in the sense of. Um, uh, we know we talk about, yeah, the Lions were better all year in totality, but when it's a matchup league and it was a one point squeaker last night, right? That was, I mean, they won by the skin of their teeth. They got problems on the pass defense, right? And then we, of course, we know the Rams and their ability to throw the ball. Okay, so that you know, even the tables a little bit there with with the, uh, the the overall aspect of the football teams, and that's why the Rams matched up and had a chance to win the football game. I don't think the Bucks or the Eagles quite have the offense the Rams do. You know, Anna Anna McVay with a playoff Super Bowl background of I can game plan for any big moment, right? So yeah, if you're the Lions, the Lions fans, you're feeling pretty damn good sitting yeah. there right now. But and and look, it, it's it's a day to celebrate. Yeah. But there's a road left to go. There and is. at some point Goss gonna have to make Big throw, big spot, game yeah. on the line. Yeah. That's why the Lions decided or the Rams, excuse me, decided to move on and we'll see if he can do it. In San Francisco. Yeah. Lions at 49ers. Sure, sure. My God. And, hey, maybe they get lucky and the Packers go out there and win. I, For as good as the 49ers are, I kind of think Packers-Lions would be one hell oh, of an NFC would be. championship. It would be. Hey, there's, the, 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 you know, either way, both teams are scary. The Lions are scary in the fact that their style of football translates to playoff football. When you got a big old line like that, you can run the ball – it gives them different avenues, different ways to attack teams, right? Uh, there's the, the, you know, whether it's the 49ers and they have to play with them, they're going to have to defend that run. And we know it's a special play action pass game off that. And the other thing, too, is the fact that their D line can stop the run and one of the better units in football with that, too, to where, you know, it'll allow Aaron Glenn to play with the back end a little bit. And, you know, we'll see where it goes. We, we know that the 49ers are in a class of their own in the NFC. And it's going to take a special effort by whoever it is, uh, that something we haven't seen from one of these teams, I think, to, to overcome the 49ers. And I think the Lions have some of those aspects to pull that type well, of upset, upset off. And the Packers, and we're going to talk about that game next, but to do what they did to Dallas gives them a shot of oh. pure concentrated confidence. They're right now, right. And, I don't and they dive got too deep nothing to it. lose. Yeah, right, but, right. But yeah. the, the 49ers are going to have their hands full on Saturday yes. with the Packers. Yeah. And they better be ready because they could get caught flat-footed as we have seen sure. top seeds do. Sure. One more thing about the Lions. Yeah. I want to give a little credit to a guy who stays in the background who I think is as responsible for the resurgence of this franchise as anyone. And he's not looking for credit. He doesn't want credit. He's going to get credit. Chris Spielman. Sheila Ford-Hamp brought him in. 
entrusted a lot of stuff to him. He he does whatever they need him to do, but he's one of the reasons, one of the big reasons they hired Dan Campbell. I remember when Dan Campbell was hired and I asked his brother Rick Spielman, who was the Vikings GM at the time, do the Vikings get a dispensation on the kneecap biting since you guys are brothers? <laughs> right. And he said when his wife saw the Dan Campbell press conference, her first reaction was, that's the guy Chris would hire. That's the only guy Chris would hire. So there's that toughness. We talk about how the Dolphins are lacking in that department. The Lions aren't. Not at all. And that's the thing that could be the difference maker as they go. Yeah, they got playoff the grit. And we see where yeah, they go. They're not afraid of the situation and going, hey, wait, it's all in. We're going all in on this moment, whatever it is. And that's why they've gotten where they have. And it's where Dan Campbell changed the whole mindset of the organization aggressive, we're going to pedal to the metal, we're going to keep the pressure on you, our offense is special, our defense is not, and because of that, they're they're ultra-aggressive on the offensive side of the ball, and that's they play through that group there. We're going to control the ball, we're going to put points on the board, and we're going to make you, our opponent in the defense, you know, have to go all in to stop us, and, and we're going to make your offense, of course, have to keep pace with us. And that's kind of the beauty of the Lions right now. And, you know, last night, that was the cool thing of the football game, is we saw a second-half adjustment where the Rams figured out how to kind of slow down the run and stop the play-action pass, and Detroit's offense couldn't get it going. And you were going, wow, this is pretty incredible. You know, I was going, they, they, were got, they couldn't stop anything in the first half, and here they are, it's Detroit, it's three plays and out, it's after the first drive, I know they got the field goal. After that, it was four plays and out. And I'm going, wow, the Rams kind of figured this out a little bit. I'll be interested to see what they did on the back end. And then as we were sitting there watching, you're just going, oh, I mean, Detroit still can't stop the Rams. The Rams, it felt like they unlocked something too to where you're going, well, every time he throws the ball, it's 15, 20 yards. They're going up and down the field. But as I said to start, and as you know and everybody knows, they got down there close to the 10, 12-yard line, and now the field shrinks, and they have a good run defense, and now the Rams and the great passing offense, they can't spread the field out and spread some of these Detroit Lions zones out because the field shrunk because you're at the 8- or 9-yard line. And it became hard for the Rams to jam the ball in the end zone there and get that touchdown. And that's where, you know, I certainly thought they blew their opportunities to win the football game. He had a Cooper Cup on the first field goal drive. He should have hit him. He missed the throw. That should have been a touchdown. The other times it was the Lions playing really good defense and giving them issues. You mentioned stopping the run during yeah. the broadcast last night. They explained that the defense last year for the Lions was so bad, they decided this offseason they got to get good at something. got to be good so at one thing. let's get good at stopping the run. That's right. And that's where it pays off when you get down into the red zone and everything crunches together if you take away the run it's harder to pass because you don't have to worry about anybody getting behind oh, exactly you exactly right and right and it, the, the windows are smaller exactly and you turn touchdowns into field goals that's how you we saw the Patriots win a, a lot of point. games a lot of years with like average defenses right we know they had some years with great defenses but they had a lot of years where they went to AFC championship game and still the Super Bowls with that formula right there we're a 15th ranked defense in football, but we're a top two or three scoring defense because, yeah, you move the ball between the 20s on us, but we don't let you in the end zone. And then Tommy gets the ball and we score a touchdown and it's 7 3 and then it's 14 6 and so on. And Detroit has a little bit of that magic there, certainly. Uh, and it, it's, it's impressive to see. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.